Uh, Minister. Humphrey, what's all the hurry? Yes, I'm so sorry. I've just been able to arrange a brief meeting with the European Commissioner. Norris, but he's flown out this morning. No, his flight's been delayed. Oh, so? Well, I think we might be able to persuade him to solve our little sausage problem. Humphrey, how? Well, excuse me. Yes? Oh, yes, ask him to come in, will you? Thank you. Leave it to me. Just, um, just give me support when I ask for it. Ah, Maurice, I've very oh, nice hey. to see you. Oh, you know each other, Yes, sir, yes. Jim. To what do I with his pleasure? <laughs> <laughs> the minister asked me to arrange this little meeting to see if you could um, help us with a problem. A pro problem? Of course. Now, the problem is that the EEC is becoming very unpopular over here. Isn't that so, Absolutely. Minister? Very unpopular. And you want to restore its image? Yes. No. No. <laughs> and the problem is that the minister feels that there would be more votes, that he would be better expressing the views of the British people <laughs> by joining the attack on the EEC than by leaping to its defence. Exactly. But, but your government is committed to support us. The minister's point, <laughs> as I understand it, is that the government's commitment is to the concept and to the treaty. Treaty. It's not committed to the institutions, nor to the practices, nor to individual policies. The minister was giving me an example the other day, weren't you, minister? <laughs> About food production. Oh, yes. I've discovered that one of your officials spends all his time paying farmers to produce masses of surplus food, while somebody in the next office pays people to destroy the surpluses. That's not true. No. He's not in the next office. Not even on the same floor. <laughs> and the minister has hundreds of similar examples, haven't you, hundreds. minister? And the nub of the problem is that the minister is beginning to think that some member of the cabinet ought to start telling the British people about them. That would be intolerable. Even the, the Italians wouldn't stoop that low. The Italians <laughs> aren't being asked to redesignate salami as emulsified, high-fat, offal tubing. <laughs> ah. Uh, and what are you proposing? After all, we are committed to harmonization. We cannot call it the sausage. Uh, what do you suggest? Well, politics is about presentation. Why don't we call it the British sausage. British sausage? Saucisse anglaise. Saucisse anglaise. British wurst. Yes, I think we could. Uh, recommend that to the Commission. Splendid. The Minister's always said that the EEC is a splendid institution, haven't you, Minister? Splendid. <laughs> It upset you, Jim. We're used to it. It happens all the time. I told them to abstain. Well, it's well known that in the British Foreign Office, an instruction from the Prime Minister becomes a request from the Foreign Secretary, then a recommendation from the Minister of State, and finally just a suggestion to the Ambassador, if it ever gets that far. Thank you. Bechai. Cheers. Well, Jim, what are you going to do about St George's? You know about that? <laughs> Obviously. Not a serious problem, is it? Isn't it? Well, your information must be better than mine. So that mine comes from the Foreign Office. <laughs> Israeli intelligence says that East Yemen are going to invade St. George's Island within the next few days. What? So that's the connection. Now, your Foreign Office have agreed with East Yemen uh, that they'll make strong diplomatic representations but do nothing. In return, the Yemenis will let you keep your airport contract after they're taken over. There'll be uproar. But that's only the start. I happen to know from our ambassador in Washington that the Americans are going to support the present government of St. George's. In the UN? No, in battle on St. George's Island. They'll send in an airborne division backed up by the 7th Fleet. The Americans invading a Commonwealth country? The palace will hit the roof. Well, I shall look ridiculous. Why didn't the Americans tell me? They don't trust you. Why not? <laughs> because you trust the Foreign Office. Oh, I see. <laughs> what can I do about it? Well, Jim, you have an airborne battalion on standby in Germany that is not now needed for the NATO exercise. How do you know? 
I know. <laughs> now, if you were to send it to St. George's Island, it would frighten off East Yemen. They'd never dare invade. Of course, it's not for the Israeli ambassador to advise the British Prime Minister. And they wouldn't take your advice anyway. <laughs> Get me the Foreign Secretary and then the Defence Secretary, please. I wonder the Foreign Office didn't cover themselves. Maybe they did. They gave me several boxes tonight. I've been through them all except this one. I wonder if this could be it. Northern Indian Ocean Situation Report. It's 138 pages. It must be it. <laughs> Hello? Yes, Roddy. I want the President of St George's Island to extend an invitation to Britain to send an airborne battalion on a goodwill visit. No, no, just a friendly gesture. Goodwill. Yes, at once, please. Thank you. You seem to think that 800 fully armed paratroopers was an awful lot to send on a goodwill visit. <laughs> no, it's just an awful lot of goodwill. <laughs> oh, yes, Paul, you know you have an airborne battalion on standby in Germany. Yeah. Never mind how I know. Well, since it's not being used, I want them to fly straight off to St. George's Island. Uh, sort of between Africa and India. <laughs> a goodwill visit. You're just showing the flag. They have been invited. Yes, leave in six hours. Yes, an instant goodwill visit. <laughs> Tell your press office to announce it at once. No, 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 no. Leave me out of it. A routine visit. All right? A routine surprise visit. <laughs> Well, say they were invited earlier, but the NATO exercise got in the way, and now they're not needed, they're going anyway. All right. Nobody knows it's not true. Press statements aren't delivered under oath. They'll <laughs> <laughs> be off at midnight. Prime well, Minister, you need to see this security file immediately. Not now, Bernard. I'm about to talk to the French President. Yes, but you sh should see this file first. That bomb in the French Embassy, Prime Minister, it was planted there by the French police. Oh, no, God, serious. Why? Oh, to see if they could catch us out, to prove our security inefficient. Smuggling explosives into the UK illegally? That's correct. Have you got proof of this? Oh, we found a matching detonator in their hotel. They've confessed. This is wonderful. Humphrey, give me two minutes alone with the President, and then when I give you a signal, bring that file in. Right. Oh, Prime Minister, of what will the signal be? Um. I'm so sorry, Monsieur le Président. I'm sure he's just coming. Monsieur le Président. <laughs> the tunnel. The tunnel, indeed. But first of all, can we clear up this silly misunderstanding about the little puppy which I am presenting as a return gift to Her Majesty tomorrow? No, there's no misunderstanding. I'm very sorry, but I can't ask the Queen to break the law. I do not want the Queen to break the law. I merely ask the Prime Minister to bend it. I'm deeply sorry, if I possibly could. Uh, if the French people learn of this rejection, a national slap in the face. Mm -hmm. The tunnel. The tunnel. But you make it very difficult for me. The French people will not accept a second slap in the face. And you are rejecting our very reasonable proposal for French sovereignty as far as Dover. <laughs> oh, well. Setting that to one side, there is the question of which shall be la langue de préférence. The first language. I have just seen this order of service for tomorrow. It is deeply embarrassing. This him. On Jordan's bank, the Baptists cry. <laughs> what? Don't you know the Jordan bank went bust yesterday? <laughs> but surely, if we have half the signs in French first and half the signs in English, that's fair. It's not logical. Does logic matter? <laughs> Does law matter? Oh, yes. Britain is the only country in Europe it's still free of rabies. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Um, the Bernard will handle this for you. Uh, that Bernard, uh, excuse me. Uh, Monsieur le Président, will you please forgive me? Prime Minister, I think you ought to see this urgently. No, I don't believe it. Mr. President, I shall have to ask you to explain this. I need hardly say how grave this matter is. Prime Minister, I, I must ask you to believe that I had no knowledge of this. 
an attempt by a guest to deceive Her Majesty's government, illegally smuggling explosives into the UK. But you must know that the French government never knows what French security are doing. <laughs> you mean you're not able to take responsibility for them? No, that's not what I mean, but if this report is true, I must ask you to accept my profound regrets. It's true enough, I'm afraid. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You see, it makes it so difficult for the Prime Minister over the Channel Tunnel. When news of this bomb is published, the British people will want to make very few concessions. They won't know whether it's safe to go through. It could be full of official French bombs. Absolutely. <laughs> of course, in the interests of Anglo-French friendship, we could perhaps overlook the crimes of your security men. I suppose uh, sovereignty halfway across? I'll just write that down, if I may. <laughs> Half the signs in English first and the starting ceremony in two months. In Dover. 